SpaceX, with its rapidly expanding fleet of super-heavy booster and Starship spacecraft, appears poised to dominate the moon. Ultimately, I think we want to build a moon base alpha and have a permanently occupied base on the moon. This is Musk's grand vision, a new branch of human civilization established at SpaceX's first lunar base. So, how exactly will SpaceX build its own moon base? Let's find out everything in today's episode. I've never been more excited about the next decade to come. Even if we don't colonize Mars in the short term, a lunar base would be an incredible milestone. Who knows? Maybe some of us will even visit Earth's only natural satellite someday. Initially, Musk wasn't particularly interested in the silver planet. The Starship spacecraft was primarily designed with Mars as its ultimate goal. However, over time, Musk recognized the strategic value of establishing a base on the moon before venturing deeper into the solar system. This is a smart and sensible idea. The moon could serve as a way station between Earth and Mars, allowing scientists and engineers to test technologies, hone skills, and gather invaluable experience in an extraterrestrial environment. This would better prepare SpaceX and other space agencies for the enormous challenges of conquering Mars. Additionally, a lunar base could become a significant revenue stream, attracting investments from governments, private companies, and even the burgeoning space tourism industry. The ambition to establish a long-term human presence on the moon isn't new. Yet, despite decades of dreaming, it has remained just that, a dream. The primary barriers have been technological limitations and the enormous costs associated with space missions. NASA and traditional launch providers have historically faced two major hurdles, limited transport capabilities and sky-high launch costs. In the past, sending just one kilogram of payload to low Earth orbit, LEO, could cost tens of thousands of dollars. A single launch could easily rack up hundreds of millions of dollars, making it economically unfeasible to transport the vast quantities of materials and equipment needed for a lunar base. These weight constraints deeply influenced every aspect of mission design and space systems. Everything from schedules, cost structures, volume, material choices, to issues of labor, energy, thermal control, guidance, navigation, and control had to be optimized to minimize weight. The result? Spacecraft built before the advent of Starship were often likened to steel bullets, incredibly complex, prohibitively expensive, and severely limited in payload capacity. This situation created a vicious cycle. Building a lunar base requires vast amounts of materials and equipment, but each flight could only carry a limited payload. This necessitated a large number of launches, driving overall costs to an unacceptable level and stretching project timelines to the breaking point. Even a single lunar exploration mission was prohibitively expensive, let alone constructing a permanent base. The colossal costs made the ambition of a lunar base seem financially impossible and industrially unfeasible. One of the biggest obstacles to building a lunar base was the payload limitations of launch vehicles. Getting heavy, large-scale construction equipment and infrastructure to the moon simply wasn't feasible with the rockets we had, that is, until Starship came along. Starship is designed to carry up to 100 tons of payload to low Earth orbit. With a diameter of 9 meters and a height of over 50 meters, it can transport large construction equipment and modules intact, reducing the need for complex assembly on the lunar surface. Its fully reusable design promises to slash launch costs, potentially bringing them down to just a few hundred dollars per kilogram. At the Lunar Surface Innovation Consortium's spring meeting, SpaceX unveiled its bold plan to establish a lunar base. According to the ambitious blueprint, setting up a solid foothold on the moon will require three basic types of starship landings. First, the utility starship. This will be the heart of the base, acting as the operational hub. It will provide power, ensure communication, store data, and house essential resources. Establishing a robust infrastructure from the outset is crucial for the long-term success of the base. Second, the Rolling Stock Starships. These will carry the mobile equipment and construction machinery needed for base expansion. This includes rovers for lunar surface exploration, construction equipment to grow the base. The ability to leverage local resources is key to sustaining a long-term presence on the moon minimizing reliance on Earth's supplies. Finally, the Habitation Starships. These will serve as living quarters for astronauts, specifically designed to ensure comfort and safety in the Moon's harsh environment. These modules will provide living, working, and research spaces for scientists and engineers. SpaceX has demonstrated that they have the capability to meet all the requirements for a sustained human presence on the Moon. Logistically, Starship's large payload capacity and low launch costs will solve the transportation challenges. The HLS, Human Landing System, variant of Starship, selected by NASA for the Artemis program can safely deliver astronauts to the lunar surface. On the communication front, SpaceX's Starlink satellite network could be extended to provide high-speed, reliable internet connectivity between Earth and the Moon. Here's an interesting detail. SpaceX's plan for this lunar mission known as the Lunar Architecture Capability Study for 10 years, 
Luna 10, is actually supported by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. Fascinating, right? Now, what do you think? How might the military get involved in building a moon base, and for what purpose? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. SpaceX has strategically chosen to build its lunar base near the moon's south pole, a decision driven by several critical factors. This region receives a substantial amount of sunlight, which is vital for generating power through solar panels. A stable energy supply will ensure the continuous operation of the base and its research equipment. Equipment. Additionally, the area is believed to hold significant reserves of water ice within permanently shadowed regions. Water is not only essential for life but can also be split into hydrogen and oxygen. This invaluable in situ resource could drastically reduce the cost and complexity of future missions. Moreover, the South Pole region holds many mysteries about the Moon's geological history and could provide precious insights into the formation of the solar system. However, before SpaceX can realize its ambitious conquest of the Moon, the company must overcome a critical technical challenge, orbital refueling. This is a key step, not just for lunar missions, but for the future of deep space exploration. Here's the deal. Starship has a pretty hefty dry mass. This means that while Starship can carry a significant amount of fuel, its large dry mass limits its range when launched directly from Earth. Starship requires much more fuel than can be carried in a single launch. So, we need refueling. And that's no small feat. SpaceX's solution? Develop a three-variant Starship system specifically for this mission. First up, we have the Tanker Starship. These are designed to carry fuel into low Earth orbit, LEO, to be used later by the HLS Starship. They're based on the same standard Starship design we're all familiar with. Next, we've got the Depot Starship, essentially a fuel storage unit in LEO. This variant is modeled after the Starship lander design, but without the landing system. It's built to store fuel until it's needed for lunar missions. And finally, there's the HLS Starship, the vehicle that will actually land on the moon's surface. It's equipped with a specialized landing system tailored for lunar conditions. Among these three variants, the tanker Starship will be the only one to return to Earth and be reused, so it's equipped with all the components we typically see on the standard Starship. The depot, serving solely as a storage unit, strips away everything non-essential, fins, heat shields, and more simplifying its structure. The HLS Starship, designed exclusively to transport humans to the moon, sports a sleek, purpose-built design. Since it's not intended to return to Earth, it doesn't need a heat shield. Instead, it'll be painted white and adorned with a national flag on top. NASA, in a presentation early last June, revealed that the HLS Starship will feature a crew compartment, solar arrays, a garage, and a lift. SpaceX's lunar landing strategy is a meticulous sequence of steps, starting with the critical refueling process. First up, they launch a propellant depot into low Earth orbit. Following this, multiple tanker starships will rendezvous, dock with this depot, and transfer fuel. Once refueled, the tankers head back to Earth, ready for their next mission. This space-based fuel transfer is a monumental challenge, something that's never been attempted before. Currently, it's estimated that SpaceX needs around 16 launches just to refuel for the upcoming Artemis 3 mission. Wow, that's a lot. And if we're talking about building a moon base, that number is going to skyrocket. But no worries. Once Starship 3, with its massive 200-ton payload capacity, comes online, the number of required flights could be significantly reduced. And guess what? We're going to witness this docking and fuel transfer many, many times before Starship is ready for its moon landing. SpaceX has to perfect this incredibly tricky maneuver, moving fuel between two spaceships through repeated practice until they get it absolutely right. They're pushing to test space-based refueling as soon as possible, possibly starting from Flight 7. That's going to be one hell of a sight to see. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.